Hi there. In this Adobe Creative Cloud Photoshop video, we're going to take a look at some additional things we can do with video. So we're going to add an AI file, a vector image that we created in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to add some preset animations to the images, images that we've already placed in this file. And then we'll look at how we can um, add manual animations via something called keyframes as well as adding an audio track and then exporting this video to a very common uh, video format that everyone can view. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have no layers selected. So I'll choose select, deselect layers. If it's already grayed out that means everything's grayed out, uh, deselected already. And then I'm going to add, put my playhead to a particular point in this video. If you hold down shift as you drag your playhead it'll snap to at the end of transitions and at the beginning of transitions. So I just want to put it right there. Not there, but there. And then I'm going to open up bridge and then I'm going to just drag. Right now I'm in uh, my lesson 5 folder. I'm just going to drag this pluralist logo video AI file right onto my document. I'll choose OK. And notice it gets placed at that point in time on a new layer because I had no layer selected. Now to accept its placement, I just press Enter on my keyboard. Now one thing about this is it's kind of hard to read, so we're going to make, uh, we're going to add some contrast between this image and the image behind it using uh, a glow filter. So I'm going to open up my layers panel. There's my logo there. I'm going to click on my little effects. I'm going to choose outer glow. I'm going to use blend mode screen. I'm going to use an opacity of around 80%. You can just drag that until you get something like 90%. There we go. We're going to use a pale yellow color. I'm just going to use that yellow right there. And I'm going to use spread zero size about 100 pixels, something close to 100 pixels. You can type in 100 pixels there if you like. And then for contour, I'm going to use this one down here. First one, second row. And I'll choose OK. Now you see it stands out nicely from the background. Now we can access very common animations via the presets and you can get those by clicking on the little arrow here on each of these clips. So if you click on that little drop down there we have some motion presets. The first one I'm going to use is pan and now we have a angle that it will pan at. I'm going to use minus 55, so you can just drag that until it's around minus 55. Or again, you can type in minus 55 on your keyboard if you like, if you want it to be exact. On this one, I'll use a, sep a slightly different preset. I'll use pan and zoom. And I'm going to use 18 for that one. If you hit tab, uh, make sure you have that checked. That will uh, avoid any uh, white areas showing from the background. And I'll just click anywhere to accept this or press enter on my keyboard. And for this one I'll also use pan with a value of 180 minus 180. something like that. So now we can drag our playhead and see what's going to happen. See they move slightly. 
Notice a little turquoise bar that's getting populated. That's just telling you which frames are 100% rendered. So if I hit my space bar, you can see it's a little bit notchy until we have a solid blue line there. So I can watch that again and you'll see it's much smoother now that everything's loaded. There we go. So that's what those preset animations do. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add a custom animation to BeatShot 2. So um, what we're going to do is lay down a keyframe and then a second keyframe and then some make, make some ch changes on the second keyframe. So basically anytime you have something change you have the point where it begins this change and then the point where it finishes this change and those are called keyframes. Now notice I presently have a transition here. If you want to remove a transition you just simply click on the transmission until you get a little border around it and then you can press delete. Let's try that again. There we go. And now I'm just going to move my logo to the same spot and I'll move my playhead to that spot as well. The uh, logo remains even after that last clip. I'm just so I'm just going to re change the uh, end point of that logo by dragging that in like we saw before. Now in order for this logo, this um, Adobe Illustrator file to scale over over time we have to change it into a, something called a smart object. So if we go layer smart objects convert to smart object now we can have the properties of this object change over time which will create the animation. So I'm going to add a keyframe right there so if I click on my little arrow here I'll choose my little stopwatch for transform and then I'll drag the playhead back to the beginning of the clip again if you use shift it snaps and I'll use my little diamond to add another keyframe there and then I'll use my free transform to make it 3800 3, pixels wide And now if you drag your playhead, whoops, first of all, you have to accept your transformation by pressing enter on your keyboard. There we go. That X disappears now. You see it scales. If that was not a smart object, transform wouldn't have been available. So we can we couldn't have a scale. Now the next thing I'm going to do, and uh, the last thing that we're actually going to do with this video before we share it, uh, is add an audio track. So you see we have an audio, tr audio track down here. I'm just going to collapse this, by the way. We don't need to see this stuff anymore. There we go. And um, there's an AIF, AIFF file in my bridge right here, but uh, this doesn't actually uh, work sometimes, depending on what operating system and what software you have installed on your computer. So I've uh, shared a couple of different versions, MP3 and M4, with you. And uh, I found the only one that works for me is the M4. So if I click on my little drop down here, add audio. I think it's in my lesson five copy. There we are. So we have uh, Pluralist Audio MP4. This one worked for me whereas AIFF did not work and a wave did not work. So I'm going to double click on that one and that adds audio. We have to make this one a bit shorter. There we go. Alright, so depending on the length of your clips you may have to make that longer or make your images shorter. And I also want to have this fade out. So if you click on the little 
triangle here, I'm going to make that fade out over one second. So if you just type in one and hit tab, it pops in the S for you. And you can press enter. And now we can check out our video with audio. So again, spacebar. And it looks pretty good. And it sounds pretty good. So now I want to share it um, in a format that people will be able to view as opposed to a PSD, which most people they'll require Photoshop in order to, or, order to see this. Um, so they won't be able to view it in a standard video player. So first of all, I'll save everything I've done. So I'll choose File, Export, Render Video, and for a name, I'm going to call it My Pluralist Video, and I'll choose a folder. I'm going to put it in my Lesson 5 folder, and we're going to use Adobe Media Encoder, format H264, preset HD 1080p 2997. Those are good settings to use. And I'll choose Render. It takes a moment to render. See there's a little progress bar. Once that's complete, I will navigate to the directory or folder that I exported to and then we'll uh, open it up and see if it opens up how it opens up in our video player so the progress bar is complete I'm going to navigate to that folder I'm just using my file browser my Windows file browser There it is there. I'm using uh, VLC player. So if I double click on that, it opens up in VLC player. And I'm just gonna pause it, bring it in so you can see it. And this is my completed video. Looks pretty good. So that was uh, adding an Adobe Illustrator file to our video, adding some preset animations, adding custom animations using keyframes, adding some audio as well as exporting our video to a common video file format. Thanks so much for watching.